Hello, uh, welcome to Coffee with Craig. I'm Dr. Craig Ingstrom, but you can just call me Craig because, hey, we're sitting down to have a chat and coffee. On this channel, I cover topics relevant to professionals in talent development and higher education and how to be a better communicator. Today's conversation is International Student to Tenure Track Insights from a TD Pracademic with Dr. PCK. How are you doing? Oh my God, how am I going to match that, Craig? <laughs> I love that. That energy. <laughs> that's awesome. No, that's great. That's great. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm really excited about our talk. This is, you know, it's awesome. Yeah, I'm just no, looking forward exactly. to sharing my experience with everyone today. Yeah, absolutely. We're excited to have you here. You had a good new year. Good start to the new year. Yeah. 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 It, it, I mean, so far, so good. It's been great so far. Awesome. So, I just wanted to like say, you know, maybe you could take a moment to formally introduce yourself, um, you know, what's your name, where you're at, what you've been doing, all that kind of stuff. Okay, sure. Um, well, first of all, thank you again for having me today. And thank you all um, in the audience for joining us today as well. My name is uh, Dr. B. Wenzhen Sub Kelly. I go by my nickname, Bui. Um, I am originally from Thailand. Currently, I am an assistant professor of organizational communication in the corporate communication and public affairs um, division in Southern at Southern Methodist University in Dallas, Texas, here in the U.S. Awesome. So, um, you know, you, I think you're pretty brave actually joining me. This is the first time I'm doing the Coffee with Craig you know, series yeah. and um, I'm like a nobody on YouTube, so it's like you wasted an hour of your time talking here. But we do have people in the audience, and actually, we already have a comment, so check this out. Uh, oh, awesome. Saying, hey, look at these two amazing people. So. Oh, wow, sweet. Well, I, I have to say that you you are actually braver for having me because, you know, I'm a nobody in academia <laughs> on YouTube or whatever. So it's fine. We're just having fun today. Yeah, we've just gone from like, you know, three viewers to like one because they're like, well, why am I sitting around with a bunch of nobodies? <laughs> But anyway, so we have coffee with Craig, right? So we got to talk uh -huh. a little bit about what we're drinking. So I just want to okay. like pop over here and say that I am drinking the Peru Cajamarca, Cajamarca or Cajamarca. It sounds spectacled cool. Spectacled Bear Small Lot Coffee from Trader Joe's. Wow. So delicious stuff there. And so that our audience doesn't feel too left out. Oh, and I'm, I'm drinking this with the LDP mug. I don't know. Um, yeah, if you could see that, but the leadership nope. development program sweet. gave me that tumbler. So pretty sweet here. Um, <laughs> and anyway, and finally, you'll, you'll get to your coffee here in a moment. But for those out in the audience, I have a Starbucks gift card. I'll go through the chat at the end and just randomly draw a winner. So come back to the chat to see if you won or into the comments of my YouTube. All right. So. Oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah. I didn't know that. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, I got to like incentivize a little bit. So what are you? That's doing? great. What am I drinking? I don't even know what I'm drinking. I'm drinking coffee. Uh, so what what kind of coffee are we drinking? Any? Uh, <laughs> Sam's. Sam's, yeah, Sam's. Fancy Sam's coffee. Very nice. <laughs> Very tasty. <laughs> okay, it's a bold dark roast. I love it. So anyway, <laughs> leave a comment. Leave comments. I'll hit those in the chat um, at some point. We're going to talk a little bit about your journey. Um, so yeah, buckle up, everybody. And again, welcome to this session. Um, so if you could just... Uh, Tell me, like, kind of quickly, like, so those that are just tuning in, what a tenure track job is, because you did mention that you're an assistant professor, and mm -hmm. some folks might not know what that is. So what is a tenure track position? Okay, absolutely. So a tenure track position, uh, so first of all, we should understand the word tenure first. A tenure, or a tenured position is a permanent position um, in, and in the academic career. So it's Basically, when you get tenure or when you are tenured, you cannot be fired by your university without cause. Um, that also means that you have academic freedom. You can teach or research on topics you like. Um, like if you choose to to teach or research on controversial topics, they cannot fire you be just because of that. They have to have you know more more reasons than that to fire you. So it's kind of job security for you. A tenure track is an entry level like a gateway or a pathway to that promotion. So you start as an assistant professor first, and then you move up the rank to associate professor, and then finally to the full professor. So that's what a tenure track means. I'm, I'm in the pathway to um, reach that permanent position in academia. Gotcha. And I heard that, um, you know, someone said that my mic might be a little loud. Are you or a little quiet? Are you hearing me okay? Yeah, I'm hearing you okay uh, on my end. I'll try to 
I'll try to adjust that a little bit. But uh, anyway, so uh, thank you for giving that little definition of that. I wanted to take a moment to actually share the screen with uh, folks here. Let's bring that up because uh, for those in higher education or going for a tenure track job, you know, it's good to know sort of what the job market looks like. Um, and so NCA, which is the National Communication Association, actually has a, um, let me see if I can get my mouse over to here. They actually have a uh, job listing sort of publication. They track really well um, what the sort of job market looks like. And quite frankly, it doesn't look great. Uh, first off, the uh, <laughs> positions decreased by 26%. That's just advertisements. That might not even mean, because a lot of times what happens is people will get um, you know, they'll advertise a position and then they'll withdraw the position later on yeah. and even hire for it. So chances are even out of this number, it's a little bit lower. Um, yeah. Now, is this so, before COVID? Uh, that is Looks because 19, of COVID, COVID. Yeah, they say actually that this could have been a result of COVID-19. Um, okay. Yeah. Though I don't think the job market's going to improve that much uh, going into next year either. It'd probably look just as worse. I mean, I'm not really mm -hmm. uh, monitoring the sort of situation are, uh, on like, there's a lot of job boards, um, right. Net, for example, for those in the field anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and they say much attention has been paid to overproduction of PAT, PhDs relative the, to the <laughs> academic job market. Uh -huh. And uh, if we dive down to figure two, it's comparing communication with PhD graduates in communication. So you can see here that the position advertisements, at least in 2019, exceeded the number of produced PhDs. So that's pretty good, but there's probably a backlog, especially from these earlier years during the Great Recession, yeah. um, where you had a, more PhDs conferred. So what's happened is people have gone on the job market for some time and then um, are now going into the tenure track positions. Um, just so communication relative to other fields has been that huge drop as we're, we're talking about. And then um, there were 73 postings for generalist positions. So that seems to be the highest uh, position diving down. Orcom, which is your area, 17 mm -hmm. advertised positions and you got one of them. You know what you mm -hmm. want? Wait, what? Um, yeah, so that's was 2019 to, oh, 1920. Yeah, 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 yeah that's okay. That's you, that's you, you know what you are? Well, you are okay. A, <laughs> you're okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lucky are, person. Yeah, yeah. You are a unicorn in this field. So let's let me show you what I mean by that. Okay, thank you, Craig. Thank, thank, you, thank you, Craig. I swear I didn't see that before. He surprised me with that. That was a good surprise. <laughs> you're just a little unicorn. You're like holding on, you know. But you've got it. You know, you got the like the one of seventeen positions out there. So congrats All right. on that. No, really. You, well, you thank you. Well. <laughs> here with you today because you really have earned it and deserve it. Let me just dive down. I'm going to get through this, and then we're going to get back to you. Um, just okay. So people that are interested, if they're thinking about going for a PhD. You know, here are the jobs, uh, strategic, public relations, advertising, or other. Oh, uh, 100 positions. Is just be like, yeah, what's that? 100 positions. Yeah, not too Wow. Um, and other. So I think maybe when people ask you, what is your, what is your degree in? Just say other. You have a high chance of being a <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Makes Statistically, sense. Statistically, you are higher. <laughs> In other it's, category. Uh, yeah, yeah, other in the communication field. <laughs> yeah, I'm just another. Uh, anyway, 27% decrease. This is the last thing I'll show here, but there were only 350 tenure track jobs out of those advertised. So not a, a ton out there. So I just wanted to highlight that pieces of information. Um, can come back to this if necessary. So yeah, cool. how do you cool. feel about being one of the few that has got, got one of those jobs? Well, I, I didn't know that was the case. I mean, it, it was very competitive, that's for sure, right? It, uh, it was quite a thing to be on a job market. But no, it's it's, it's great to see the stats. And uh, yeah. I appreciate that. So I made it. So it's a journey, right? <laughs> it's, yeah, it, it. it's, it's really now, a journey. Not by working hard. So maybe 
talk to folks about your journey. What was your journey like? Um, yeah, yeah, just kind of tell your story so that they understand that it does take work. Yeah. Um, you mean like a journey to get to this tenure track yeah, to position? Yeah. Okay, um, so okay, this is a long answer, and maybe we'll have to kind of have, uh, like, we'll go kind of different ways with this question. But um, the I think first thing that I want to say about my journey is that it's very nonlinear. Uh, that there was there's a uh, was a lot of bumps in the road, and also a lot of identity crisis for me. So what do I mean by <laughs> what, what do I mean by nonlinear? You know, when you this is my own observation. It it might or might not be true, um, but I. So I see a lot of people, you know, many academics who um, went straight from their undergrad degree, degree to their master's degree and then to their PhD, and then um, they look for a data track position and they get a full professorship. Mine was nothing like that. Oh, that's my friend. Hey, Parvisa. <laughs> um, so, so mine was nothing like that, right? Um, I had about I had actually a long gap between my undergrad and my and my PhD, about eleven years actually. Um, I knew that I wanted a PhD since before I uh, I finished my college degree. I didn't have a, a real purpose. I, I thought it was just cool, and that's that's kind of like you know the um, like the the highest point of your education. So I want a PhD, but I didn't have a purpose for it. So I went to the business world, and I got distracted. I had so much fun, uh, you know, working, doing different things, um, and I got distracted for. A good decade. <laughs> but during that time in Thailand, I was in Thailand the whole time. Um, what I did the most of the time um, during that period was teaching and, and training people. Um, I got uh, many wonderful opportunities to teach people almost from all walks of life, from young children to teachers to parents, um, inmates, Buddhist monks, and so on, from a group of five to, to 1,000 and so on. So it was, it was, you know, it was very enjoyable. And you see how, how I was distracted for so long. And at the end of that decade, I, I realized I really enjoy this field, you know, training and development. But I, don't, I, I didn't think it could go far without more knowledge, without an, an, a real expertise. And so I thought, okay, I need an advanced degree. That was my answer. So that was like the end of, I would say, chapter one of my professional life, that my, my, the first decade. So I came to the U.S. to pursue my master's. Um, degree in organizational communication. My goal was still to to streamline my training and you know consulting practice. I would go back to Thailand after the program and so on. But once I started the program, I fell in love with research. There was something about academia and this you know an environment that I really appreciate. So I continue to a PhD um, program. I, I didn't stop there. I kind of now finally I went back to my original plan to get a PhD, and then I did. So I um, I did my PhD, and and then. <laughs> I fell in love with research even more. <laughs> it was even deeper now. Like now I started to have this identity crisis that I was talking about. Okay, what do I do? Am I going to go back to Thailand? Am I, am I going to go back to consulting? Or am I going to stay in the US and, and pursue an academic career? So what do I do? Um, there was a lot of intrapersonal communication, you know, negotiating within myself, a lot of self-doubt, self self-doubt, uh, talking to my mentors, asking the same questions over and over again. I bored them so much because I kept repeating myself about bored. what, what, that's the wrong what word. I should... It should be annoyed. It should be annoyed. I annoyed <laughs> my mentors. I know. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. Well, I annoyed them. I, I guess yeah, I annoyed them. That's, that's all right. Interesting words to say. <laughs> I, I bored them. No. Like, okay, I annoyed them. You you annoyed them. No, I'm kidding. All right. Hey, no, no, that's right. Get a mentor, ask lots of questions. All right. Sorry, right. Right. So no, 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 you're that's good. You're so I struggled. And... I annoyed them enough. And then I realized, okay, hey, I don't have to choose either or. Um, it's, you know, through my involvement in the training and development division at NCA, the National Communication Association. And I met people like you, Craig, who, who have been, you know, doing so well and so successful in both worlds, both the academic world and also in the business world. So then I realized maybe I can do the same. Maybe I can have this sort of hybrid career. I can still teach. I can still be an, an academic, but at the same time, um, I can bridge these two worlds and I bring the knowledge that I know that I know to also do, you know, provide consulting or training to people in the business world. So and that's my goal. So once I made that decision, I started to pursue a tenure tenure track position for real. So I, I'm I'm gonna stop there first because that's that's how my non-linear journey started from 
before I got my college degree to the time I decided to pursue a tenure track position. That's awesome. So I've gotten a few comments that people are saying my mic's a little low. And uh, so okay. I've, I've done doing some adjusting here. Let me know in the comments <laughs> if you can hear me better. It sounds fine to like uh, Dr. CP or PCK to me. I'm going to start calling you that. Okay. Um, anybody out there? Um, how's the mic now? Does it even work now? This is funny how, how your mic is not agreeing with you today. Like it's either too loud or too too low. Yeah, it's really insane. Too soft. Um, <laughs> you know, I've, I've, I've got like my mic gain up and everything. So who knows? Yeah. I'll keep playing with it. Hopefully it's not peeking out now. So. Okay, that's a lot. That's quite a bit louder, but it's still okay for me. It's clear. Okay. All right, good. Well, maybe for those out there, they haven't, maybe they've left because my mic was too low. Anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, that sounds like a very interesting journey, but I don't think uh, it's not too uncommon for people to kind of start thinking, I'll go more professional route and then decide to go on because they enjoy research and teaching, which is exactly uh, what my journey was. Uh, I thought I would do like intercultural communication training. So, uh, but you are an international student and I think that comes with some interesting challenges and benefits. Um, mm -hmm. So what are some of those? What are some of the challenges and benefits? Okay, so <laughs> the challenges are so clear. Um, the three things that kind of came came to my mind. The first thing is, of course, language. Right, Lang uh, English is not your first language, so it's it's quite um, it's quite challenging to to read the materials, to um, kind of engage in a classroom, and in in a graduate program, the PhD program, there are a lot of readings per week. Like, how on earth am I going to read all of, of you know, those many pages of academic articles and so on, especially if you take a rhetoric course, right? <laughs> Your weekly reading can be like 600 pages per week. Like, that's crazy. How, so how, how, like on earth uh, was I going to be able to to do that? And also the, the terms, um, it's not just simple terms. Like sometimes I feel like those rhetoricians, I mean, I love them, but you know, they they write without thinking about us international students who <laughs> so have to really uh, look up every word in order to understand just one paragraph. Anyway, so the language. No, but they don't adapt their language either, right? So, I mean, if you're following my figuratively speaking series, I'm still using the like Greek and Roman uh -huh. words. So, uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. I mean, it's, it's third fun. language. Right. Oh, oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Greek language, Latin. Oh, anyway, so um, so language, right? And it's not just the, the the jargon, the technical terms, the you know graduate level terms, like the slang, the idioms in, in everyday life. I remember my experience. Like people were sharing. It was a class discussion, right? And people were laughing. I didn't understand why they were laughing. Like, what was what what joke were they making during that class discussion? And so I I asked I asked my friend next to me, and it was <laughs> and he wrote it down, and I and I and I read it loudly you know, i just read it out loud and the whole class look at me like they crack up because that term has some sexual innuendo there was it, it, we were not discussing sex or anything during the class but it was kind of it, it was it, you know you know kind of it's funny and it's it's just crazy so you have to really navigate things like that i mean um at one point urban dictionary was my good friend are you familiar with Urban Dictionary? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> right. Okay, it's a great so resource. I actually right. tell my students that's where you should be getting most of your definitions. <laughs> yeah, right. Anyway, yeah. so the language and also the culture, um, you know, coming from a different country, you have to navigate these cultural differences. It's, you know, the funny thing, before I came to the U.S., I was actually very confident, optimistic, and I thought I, I should be fine. Um, I I work with, uh, like, foreign countries foreign companies in Thailand. I, uh, my, for a long time, my, my mentor back in Thailand, uh, my former boss, she uh, was also American, right? And I thought, you know, if I watch enough American movies and I watch enough Sex in the City and <laughs> HBO series, <laughs> I would be able to understand the, the culture and the, and the, the things, uh, um, like, American life enough, but that was not the case. So I had, I, I really experienced culture shock and, and it was quite, uh, it took some time to to understand the cultural um, differences and, and to get through those cultural differences. And the last thing is the educational system. Things are not the same. You know, the, the educational system, the, um, the 
I mean, the, the, the way the relationship between teacher and instructor in the classroom, the formality. Um, I remember that my first presentation, it was super formal. <laughs> it was just a class presentation and I dressed up like everyone looked at me like, why is, why is this girl so formal and so weird? And, and then, you know, little by little, I learned or how like it's, it's a lot of discussion based in the classroom, but, um, and you try to, to engage, but your language can be, you know, can get in the way by the time you translate words from your own language to English, someone else already said the same thing that you wanted to say. So um, I would say those are the three main things for me, the language, the culture, and um, the educational system. Yeah. So where were your, like, you know, colleagues and friends, you know, um, helping you out, like kind of stopping you from looking, you know, stupid when you show up for a presentation? Weren't they around helping you or, you know, are maybe folks not as friendly as they ought to be in the communication discipline to international students? <laughs> well, no, when um, I, I did get help from people. I mean, I for, for me personally, I got help from my um, when I started my my master's degree. I, I, I was at that point, I was already a uh, married woman and I got help. I mean, that's, I mean, my husband was the one helping me getting through the, the culture shock as well, right? So I, I had him, but also in, in school, um, I had friends who would help me understand um, the differences as well. Um, and observation, a lot of observation. Uh, observing what people, observing the nonverbal language, the nonverbal communication from people, and kind of observing what your peers, how they, how they dress, and how you know what they do, how the way they talk, and the way they engage, and you kind of, you adapt um, as you go. So, okay, and I'm wondering, you had this challenge adapting to graduate school. Were there adaptations from an international perspective for getting that first job, um, and then continuing on because you didn't just leave and get a tenure track job; you had to work. Um, you know, in instructor roles for some time. So what are some of the challenges that come along with being an international student um, on the job market? Um, on the job market as an international student, I, I think it's the, this is an interesting question. And, and I guess at that point when I was I mean, my, my, my journey, like I talked about how, you know, it took me a while to be ready to pursue a tenure track position, right? And then my, my job search actually took a good three years and I can talk about that. Uh, we can, you know, kind of go in detail about that later. But by the time, um, when, when I finally was ready to, um, to really get a job, to, to secure a position, I felt like my, me being an international student was no longer a problem for me. I use it as a benefit more than a challenge. Um, mm -hmm. I, I would, I would, I would put it that way. The, um, I, I, yeah. So I didn't really, it, I mean, it was, it's always competitive and I would always look for program that, uh, programs that are open, that welcome, um, interna international scholars as well. So, you know, to avoid, you know, problems like people, microaggressions, people looking at you like, you know what, you don't know what you're talking about or, or things like yeah. that. I, I mean, I had a great experience because I didn't, like in my interviews process, I didn't come uh, come across anyone or any anything that would look at me weird just because I didn't uh, speak perfect English or just because of my foreign face. So, um, yeah, I, I guess the challenge is in general is still the same. You know, you have to make sure that you understand the job postings. You uh, you read carefully. You prepare your job materials. Um, it you, it just it still for me. I still take a long time to read and to write because English is not my first language. So you take a long time to prepare. You know, a good profile. It takes a lot so in, in that sense. Um, but yeah, fortunately, I didn't have to deal with. Um, microaggressions or you know discrimination, um, people being racist comments or anything like that during my job interviews. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's mm -hmm. good to know for sure. Um, mm -hmm. Now, where what would you say then um, helped you? Because I know some folks that will watch this eventually, uh, kind of are in the job market or thinking about it. What do you think gave you that competitive edge? I mean, I, I wasn't joking when I say kind of like higher ed jobs are unicorns, uh -huh. right? And uh -huh. you latched on and held on. So, how how did you get that? You know, how did you become the one that they selected ultimately? Okay. Now I'm gonna give you my three year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be as brief as possible, but I can tell you 
first thing that it actually took me three years to finally land this position. And so this is this is how it happened. I entered the job market, the academic job market, the first time in late, already late fall 2017. At that point, um, I just finished my my coursework, my PhD coursework, right? I passed my comprehensive exam. Um, I, I even didn't have a clear idea about my dissertation topic yet. So I was, I was quite, it, it was quite early to start um, my search at that time. And, and I can tell you that I was not that prepared. I was very optimistic, like you show earlier about the many, um, you know, the, the stats of uh, jobs available and so on. Um, I didn't look at it that way at the time. I didn't see how many people got the job compared to the number of, of jobs available, right? But what I saw during my coursework when I was on the you know, on when I got the job postings on, uh, via the NCA listserv, the National Communication Association listserv, I thought it was, whoa, there are a lot of, of, of jobs available out there. So whenever I started applying, I can't, I can't get a good position. You know, I didn't think about the number of candidates <laughs> looking for the same position, right? So I thought, um, okay, I, I have a shot. I already had two pubs at that time, two publications. Um, I thought I served, you know, on the leadership team of the uh, the tra uh, training and development division, NCA, um, um, and I was teaching business and professional communication, so I should be able to to answer good good questions in a job interview and kind of prepare impressive job materials. I was wrong. <laughs> oh, wait, you're, you're admitting you didn't interview interview well. No, I'm just kidding. I'm, no, later, later. That was not my first year, right? That was not yeah, my yeah, first yeah. year. So, yeah. and I I apply only. I am high. I was just too way too optimistic, and I was so ignorant. I, you know, people told me they apply for a hundred positions to get, to finally get a job. I didn't really attend to, to that. And, and that's real, right? I didn't attend to that wise succession. I applied for less than 10 programs and I aim only high programs. So <laughs> nobody <laughs> was going to hire me. <laughs> nobody was going to hire me. I didn't have enough. Like I couldn't show them that I had something to offer. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So I didn't get a tenure track position at that time. But, unfor I mean, fortunately, really luckily, I got a lecturer position. And I, I am, mm -hmm. I was, and I still am very thankful for that position. You know, in hindsight, that was just perfect for me at that time. I was hired as a, a full-time lecturer um, at the University mm -hmm. of Alabama in Huntsville at UAH. And it was because of that position. So now that's the following year, right? 2018, it was because of that position that really strengthened my profile. Um, mm -hmm. I was teaching four courses. It really introduced me to a full professorship. Now, like life is different now. I was not just a grad student, but I now I was a full-time um, professor, right? So I was introduced to a, the other side of academia. I was teaching four courses, serving as an internship coordinator, serving as a basic course director for business and professional communication. Um, I also... Um, advised the student newspaper club for the university. To, um, so mm -hmm. I did all of those surveys while teaching four courses. I, I taught new courses as well, and also while doing my dissertation. So that year, I was not on a job market. My, my purpose was just to finish my dissertation. And so I did. <laughs> and then at the end of that year, um, I became Dr. Bui, right? And now, mm -hmm. and then at, at that point, I felt like, okay, I have my PhD in hands now. My my I understand academia a lot better now because I've been on this side for for quite some time. Um, I have a few more publications, including one in a top tier journal at this time. Um, Congrats on that, by the way. Yeah, thank, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and so and and so this time I was I was more ready. I love my experience mm -hmm. at UAS, and I'm so thankful for that experience. But my heart was with a tenure track position you know, a, a research yeah. position. I, I wanted to be an assistant professor. And so I re-entered yeah. the race. But yeah. this time I felt like I was a grown woman as a job seeker. I was <laughs> I was not just like an overly confident person thinking, you know, that somehow miraculously she would land a, a good position. No. So I apply big programs, small programs. I apply for every position um, available there. I made sure to tailor my material specifically to the job call. So I made it unique for every position. Um, I made sure to use the keywords from the job postings in my materials. I practice and practice and practice for my interviews. I learned from each interview, you know, when I made a mistake, I, I look at, okay, what mis what did I say that I didn't, I shouldn't have said. And I learned mm -hmm. in in another, so I did better in in uh, another program. I mean, in the next interview, um, and then finally, 
I got an email from SMU inviting me for an informal interview at NCA. Yeah, yeah, and you hey. got the position. <laughs> and then finally, I got the position. Because <laughs> you were like, "Yeah, I'm ready now, right?" Um, and yeah. uh, just just as a side note for those that are here, uh, the colors on the screen uh, with the name is actually SMU colors. So, a little little hey. branding for you there. <laughs> Great job. I want to say actually, yeah, I actually wanted to. I was going to test you on this, but one of the first things you did when we joined the pre-session was, hey, those are SMU colors. So just, you know, if like an administrator is watching, you're definitely buying into the brand. I love it. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And to be so, frank, you know, your journey sounds very similar to mine. Um, so maybe it's not specific to international students at all, but really just about having to do some hustling, you know. Um, so I left and started at University of Montana. And they gave me a four three prep. Like I literally prepped seven new courses, and oh. Yeah, but I mean, I learned <laughs> so much. Okay, of that. there was even yeah. more than me. <laughs> they were kind enough to give me the same course. It was just different sections yeah. of the same course in, in each semester, so it was not too. No, bad. but you were basically course director for business but, com, right? Yeah, but I had other yeah, things that I had to do as well. It's yeah. a lot of work, but then you have that administrative experience, and you can put that on your right your, exactly your resume or CV yeah. and definitely yeah. helps out yeah i wouldn't um, complain at all i actually enjoyed it a lot yeah okay um so now you've started your position what, what's going on there how's that like i'm loving it i'm loving it you know it's like it's a long journey before i got i got here right to this position um so i i really enjoy interacting virtually with my students I haven't been able to uh to meet them face to face in the classroom yet because of the pandemic but um i um so i enjoy teaching i enjoy researching um i really um, enjoy my my and i'm very thankful for my colleagues at smu as well they're very supportive and they you know they make sure that um despite of of the pandemic they make sure to to, to make me feel like family so we communicate regularly via um email and text messages and so on yeah, I actually had uh, an interview with one of your current students and uh, top-notch folks there, you know. Oh, awesome. Tell. Yeah. Sweet. So, yeah. Um, and what was what has it been like, I guess, starting in the midst of a pandemic? That can't be very fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting, right? I mean, when you start a new job, you always have a lot of uncertainties, um, things that you information that you you want you try to understand the culture you try to to develop relationships with people you know to to get to know them um, on a personal level and so on but um because of the pandemic everything is i mean we do remote work mostly right um so it uh, i didn't get to really experience campus life because i teach from home um but like i said it was not too bad because i have a very um supportive group of colleagues my i mean my whole department I'm, i really i really appreciate them um they like i said they they make sure that i'm part of the family um and they you know any questions that i that i have you know, when i have questions i would always reach out to them and then they will give me great advice it's great yeah mm -hmm. so That's great to it's, hear. it's not too bad right yeah absolutely so just if uh, for those folks that are, you know, listening in, if you want to ask any questions, you know, feel free to drop those into the chat and uh, we'll be to, sure to attend to them. Um, so you got you've gotten started, you're uh, enjoying your position, you hustled for a couple of years before getting this position. Now you're sort of into it. Uh, what what does the future look like for you? Um, I guess we could start with like what kind of research projects are you working on? You know, what would be your five-year plan other than getting tenure obviously mm -hmm. <laughs> right <laughs> right okay so my so first of all um i am organized an organizational communication researcher right i, I mentioned that so what i uh, what i study specifically it's about the role of communication in in the organizational settings that that's like a general thing right but specifically i study conflict management um i that's what my dissertation is about i also um just uh, falling even from COVID, I've uh, been studying, conducting this uh, like a cross-cultural um, research project. Um, Dr. Professor Sholon actually is, is my um, co-researcher. I think she's here as well. Um, so we, we look at how workers 
uh, made sense of the COVID-19 pandemic and how how the pandemic affected their well-being, their productivity, their satis um, like relational satisfaction in the workplace. We look at personality, resilience, well-being, you know, the association among um, among these variables. Um, we look at people in Croatia and Thailand and the United States. So we look at these three different countries. So um, that's that's a like a major project that we have. Uh, I already mentioned my conflict management. Um, mm -hmm. I so we looked at. I, I'm interested in emo, the role of emotion in conflict management. Um, I also look at you know though you were because we're communication researchers. So of, of course we 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 are. Or I'm I am interested in the communication aspect, like the way the messages that you you use when you negotiate a conflict, um, and how like perception of employees um, on their employers, you know, like. But credibility, willingness to comply, or willingness to come to like to seek win-win solutions um, when the manager, male or female, uses uh, a certain kind of communication with them during a conflict, like an, a highly emotional uh, conflict negotiation. Um, so those are the two main projects. I have a few other other things as well, but uh, those are kind of like my my the the two key things that I have right now. So Sounds my, like you're busy, yeah. Yeah, I've been pretty busy, yeah. But I enjoy <laughs> it. I, I love. I mean, this this yeah. is the aspect that I really enjoy when when you are in this position. You um, you're not just a consumer of knowledge anymore. You are the creator and the generator of knowledge. That's that's what I really like. You get to ask questions and you get to to seek. And answers. Of course, you have to use, you know, valid, um, valid approaches. You have to design your studies in such a way that um, your your results are not biased and so on. Then, then you report your findings to people who can use your findings. It's it's very fulfilling when you get to that point. So yeah, these two projects are going to keep me busy for quite some time. And my, so my goal is to get tenure, right? <laughs> to get published, <laughs> yeah. um, to, to publish and publish and publish while also fine tuning my teaching and maybe um, do more on the consulting side. Yeah, I was going to circle back to that. So do you oh, think okay. this is going to come full circle for you um, with consulting um, opportunities? Um, I hope so. It it might it might not start, you know, it, it's not going to be like a boom. <laughs> it would be awesome if I conducted research like uh, Amy, Dr. Amy Cuddy <laughs> at Harvard. <laughs> and yeah. then she came up with the power posting and then, you know, that went yeah. viral and so on. And then you became, um, uh, you kind of you could do consult I, I don't know about her I don't know if she did some consulting after that but I, I guess so um, I mean that that would be awesome yeah. right but um, um, so yeah little you know little by little I, I'd like to I love helping people I think that's that's mm -hmm. the thing that I enjoy the most I love I love teaching I love learning I love creating new knowledge but at, but the, the important thing for me is that I, I get to use this knowledge to help others and so yeah folks, if I can help you with communication <laughs> <laughs> skills development or whatever conflict management or whatever, reach out to me. Yeah. Yeah. So let me, that's a good uh, opportunity to share. If you want to connect with uh, Dr. PCK, uh, <laughs> did I say that right? Or is it PK? I got to figure that no, out. PCK. No, you're good. You're good. You're good. PCK. Uh, yeah, yeah, there is her LinkedIn and definitely reach out. Um, you know, even if you're not looking for consulting opportunities, it's always good just to be sort of connected. And yeah, um, yeah, for sure. And so are you doing any consulting then internationally? Because I think that's one thing that you actually have kind of um, an opportunity in that a lot of communication instructors or faculty in the talent development world would not be able to do. Like, you know, I can't go to Thailand, for example, or, or not likely to. So are you are you finding any opportunities there or do you want to continue uh, looking for opportunities there? I, I want to continue looking for opportunities. In the past, you know, several years in grad school, my, my focus was on really um, on getting my degree um, mostly. So on the, on the academic side, like strengthen, strengthening my research, my writing and so on. So I haven't done, I've done, um, I've been doing some consulting, but not like in a large scale yet. And yeah, definitely I'm interested in international consulting projects, like where I can help people in Thailand, I can help people here as well. Um, I definitely look forward to or, or seek opportunities, um, but that that would, would, would take some time. It's not gonna happen right away. You know, I started this job just last semester, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm, I'm still like on my first year as a tenure track professor, so I'm not gonna like go, go crazy um, doing, uh, seeking an international client and kind of 
start try to scale my business or anything like that yet. Mm-hmm. But but yeah, I I do hope to to branch out to kind of develop myself um, into that area. That's great. Yeah. Well, if you ever need any, you know, I don't know, person that has some expertise in public speaking or persuasion for your clients over there, you know, do keep me in mind. I will need a oh, translator yeah. though. Just... Oh, oh, yes. Oh, yes, Mr. Mentor. Yeah, you, you will be the yeah. person that I would go to. Oh, yeah. I mean... You'll never bore me at all. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's or annoying. Yeah, that's yeah, good. good. No, 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 no. Thank you. No, you're a great role model. I, I, really no, I always you. love our chats. Yeah. Well, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I always love our chats, you know, and I appreciate you joining this kind of live scenario for me to help me kind of, you know, develop a new skill set. As you can see, I'm still learning how to do this. Um, but anyway, uh, this is kind of like get towards wrapping this up. Um, are there any tips or advice that you would like to leave the audience with? Yeah, um, sure, definitely. The, the th- I think, can I c- c- kind of break it down? <laughs> I, I know I, I, have this, <laughs> I have this tendency to kind of go long with that in my answer. No, no, I mean, I have but, like, um, a, I, I'm just trying to respect your time. We have like, I mean, the whole hour, yeah, you know, so, I'm, so you know, I just wanted to say though, yeah, like if there's something I missed and you want to speak about, please do, this is your time. Yeah, time okay. to shine. So I, I like to, to say one thing about job search or how I get to uh, the SMU physician, and then I'll give you my three tips that I, I think are very important. Um, Absolutely. And I like to leave you with. So the one one important thing is, you know, when, when you're looking for a job, right? So I mentioned how um, you want to prepare well, you have to, you want to strengthen my prof- your profile with research, teaching, and so on, um, tailor your information your job applications to the job they're looking for emphasizing that you can fulfilling you can fulfill their needs and so on another important thing is to fit whether or not you fit the the position um i felt lucky because and you you want to know what you're looking for and what i mean by fit it's not just the skills not just the qualifications but also the values when i was looking for the job I mean, when I was reading job, this, the job call at, at SMU, the thing that, you know, one, one of the things that really grabbed my attention was their motto, the world's changers, of world changers shaped here. That spoke to me. It was, it mm. was really, you know, it was it's so exciting. And I wanted to be part of that community that, that creates world's changers. And really, that's mm. how, my, how I see my students at SMU for my just, just the past semester, right? Um, so I, I identify with that mission. I identify with, 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 with what they want to do, with their entrepreneurial spirit, their intention to bridge the gaps between theory and practice and help people in both worlds. So I kind of mm. mentioned that, that same thing already, and I saw that. And, and so that's what I mean by fit, right? Your qualifications, your values, your um, what you value and what the organization value. And so when I, when I got to, um, when I was you know lucky enough to get, uh, campus interview, I made sure to to mention those things, right? And I made sure to, to yeah. ask for the position, like to show them that I identify with what they do and I wanted to be part of the community. And I, um, and it just clicked to like the campus environment and everything. Like when once you find a position that you know is yours, that fits you, it, something will tell you. And I, I felt that way when I when I got here. Um, and fortunately, they probably saw it too. That's <laughs> why they picked me. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, the fit is very important. You want you don't want to feel stifled when you are you know when when you get a job like especially for us international scholars, right? You, you want to feel like they're welcome. They they are inclusive. Mm-hmm. Um, so make sure to, I mean, give a lot of 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 importance. Like pay attention to this fit thing as well it's it's very important yeah. beyond the your qualifications so that's that's the thing about the job job part and then my last three tips for you you need three things to succeed uh, in my opinion you need knowledge you need the right knowledge you need social support you and you need the right mindset right so what do i mean by knowledge you the quality of your decision depends on the quality of your information you can't make an informed decision unless you have you have good information. And especially, you know, I, I think many times it's not just me and it's not just international students. I think even um, students from here, you, I think it's very easy to, to, you know, run into at some point an identity crisis about whether or not you're going to stay in academia or you're going to pursue a consulting, uh, consulting job or business job or, or what. You will make a better decision if you have enough information. So take any 
professional development courses available to you, attend conferences, um, you know, as, as much as you can, as, as your um, funding or finance allows, take advantage of career services, walk to them, help them, get them, look at your resume. It was very helpful for me, you know, when, when you know, the first time I got that service, it was really helpful. Um, ask them about your visa, like what do you need to do if you want, if you decide to stay, right? They can help you go to the international services. They can, they can give you advice on that. Take like use the speaking center, the writing center, the resources from your professional organization um, in, in your discipline. So seek knowledge, that's one thing. And then support, I mentioned that it takes a whole village to build an academic, a professor, especially a good one. It's hard yeah. to survive alone in grad school. It, it does take a whole village. You need mentors, not just one. You need a lot of mentors too. Not a single mentor can address all of your needs and you should not depend on just one person to always you know, answer your needs, no. Um, so find, you know, like when you look at your committee members, when, when you were like advising committees, look at their strengths and look at people that you can, can relate to, right? That you can form interpersonal relationships with, not just not just get things done, but also that you can be friends with. Um, and when you find them, when you find that group, be good with them. Don't just take from them. You want to you wanna stay in good exchange. So respect them, help them with research, be grateful, be thankful for them, stay in communication with them. It's hard to find people who can support you, but when you find them, keep them because you're going to have a lifelong relationship with them it's not going to end after grad school you're going to you're going to need recommendation letters you're going to need you know when you find a job when you when you uh, try to get a promotion and so on so find a good group of people to help you and then the right mindset it's so easy to give up <laughs> whether you are in, yeah whether you are it's very stressful it's very challenging whether you are an international student or not right it's it's always stressful in graduate school um and i you know i i always hear this word it's about surviving you want to survive like and it's about perseverance you want to persist don't give up keep keep your eyes on the mountains you'll get there and folks if you're from um you know if you're an international student think about it this way you come ten thousand miles to this country that speaks a lot to your courage you have a, you have gone through so many struggles and you're still here so just walk a little extra miles, have that focus on your strength, focus on the positive and you'll get to your destination. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if I should share my picture now. <laughs> I have some pictures to share, but. So, no, you should. I, like, I really, yeah. I mean, so when you're feeling, you know, maybe a little down or, you know, struggling, you know, what keeps you motivated? Okay. All right. Thank you for the segue. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm going to have this, I'm going to share this, you know, one, um, so this is when I was at UAH, right? Like I was, I, I was, like I said, I, I was doing so many things. I was writing my dissertation. It was stressful during, especially during that week. I came home and I, I saw these two pictures on the counter, the kitchen counter that my husband printed out for me. Can you see that now? Uh, I need to put it into the stream there for you. Okay. So it's kind of a visual representation of where you've been to where you've come. Right? Yeah. Exactly. So, so he put these two pictures on the on the kitchen counter to to remind me of how far I have become. You see, on the left side, that's me. I was I think I was about twelve uh, years old at the time. Um, that's me wearing my favorite T-shirt. That was I I loved that so much. I thought it was really pretty, and I wore that very often. Yeah, you it's see, a very you, nice T-shirt. You, I like you, it, you can yeah. tell how often I wore that one. You know, behind that was our laundry area it was also our open area and behind that was our little chicken farm there um it, it was a happy life right but you know looking back i had my struggles i had um and what i knew was that i had i had big dreams i like i i was always think i love i always loved learning i always loved education and i dream big you know, I got distracted my my path was really non non-linear like i said before but finally i I accomplished my dream to get my PhD. And now I would say I'm on a third chapter of my life, you know, <laughs> of my professional life as an assistant professor now as a tenure track faculty. I've come a long way to me on the right side. So, of course, I still have self-doubts many times. I still like feel like I, I'm not good enough. I, I should do more. I should work harder. I should 
get better. There are a lot of people my age, so way advanced now. I'm so slow and so on. But when I think about how far I have already become, you know, from where I was at that time, I'm a first college educate, first generation college student. Actually, my parents only had uh, they finished grade four, like over half a century ago, and that was the mandatory education level. But they taught me well, and they taught me to love. To learn, and they taught me that anything is possible if you work hard enough. So that's really a long, a long way, <laughs> just to say that. Just embrace who you are. Think of your strengths. Use your struggles to as as fire, you know, to keep you motivated. Um, I have a long way to go in in this career. I don't consider myself successful, or you know, I don't have a big name here yet. But I'm gonna continue. I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep pushing. Because I, yeah. I I know that I can do I can get better every day, and you yeah. can. Well, you too. don't want to, you know, pursue a name, right? You want to pursue. I think you summed it up well. You enjoy what you're doing, right? Um, mm -hmm. You love producing knowledge. You love producing well-educated students ready to tackle the world. So I think that's you know in and of itself enough. You know, um, mm -hmm. you know it's I guess fun. for me too, right? Yeah, like mm -hmm. even on this, right? If I have, if we have three or four people watch this that's great. It's three or four people that got really good insights from you about what it's like for you and your journey. Um, they probably mm -hmm. learned that if they think they're going to get a PhD and walk out and get a job, well, I think most people know that's not the case anymore, but what are some of the challenges that exist? And now they have a good contact you, they can reach out and say, Hey, I watched this. And you know, what side of tips, what were the things that you made mistakes on in your interview? Mm -hmm. um, this is what we do. This is why we do it. We don't do it for, I think, you know, fame. Now, of course, if you have a name that might help your consulting business or your training <laughs> development business. And yeah, yeah that's, it, it is kind of easy to say, you know, don't chase that. But at the end of the day, you do want recognition. Um, there were a couple of comments here that I just wanted to say, I don't know if you saw them because you were, you were talking. Um, I, I believe you know this individual. So I'll let you <laughs> pronounce their name. Is it Pavica or? Pavica. Pavica. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, beautiful child there as well. And uh, yeah, she was talking about, <laughs> this is her favorite in terms of the the photos that you were sharing yeah. and the advice yeah. that you were giving. And then also um, she wanted to give a shout out to you know, Robert <laughs> and I, I don't know, who's, who's Robert? Oh, thank you. Oh, who's Robert? For, for those that are listening, yeah, who's Robert? <laughs> this handsome guy is sitting right here listening to me. He's not going to get on camera. He's my, yeah. he's my champion, <laughs> yeah. my husband, Dr. Robert yeah, Kelly. Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, really, I've appreciated you like spending, you know, the hour with me, drinking some coffee, talking about a t topic that I think is relevant to a lot of people. Hearing your story, I didn't know a lot of these things. So, um, honestly, <laughs> See, I surprised it's been you. a like, pleasure. You surprised me with a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave out with that. That'll be the last thing we show is that unicorn again. I, and I do it kind of in jest, but also in reality. It's just a tough position. And apologies for those who stuck it out. And you know, when I had the mic issues, I did realize kind of what the issue was. And I think I fixed it more or less. Um, anyway, uh, thank you. Um, I hope that we'll be able to connect a little bit more this year. Let's do a research project at some time. Uh, yeah, yeah. I got to yeah, ride yeah. your coattails. Any like, last final words? Uh, yeah, last thing I want to say, though, just as a reminder, uh, get in touch. Uh, there's Dr. PCK's LinkedIn. And uh, yeah, uh, any Gosh, final I, word? I love your voice. <laughs> no, no, it, this is, it, I, had, I had a lot of fun. I, I really appreciate uh, the opportunity to have this, you know, talk with you. It was, it was enjoyable, actually. It's, it's kind of, it's, um, when you talk about your journey, when, I mean, when you first asked me, or in, invited me to, to, to do this together, and I'm so thankful you chose me the first person <laughs> to, to do this with you, you know, it was nerve wracking. It's like, okay, my journey, are people going to, are they going to like it? Um, are they going to understand my English? Uh, you know, I have a lot of self doubts, right? But then, you know, when I thought you of shouldn't. it, okay, it's not, it's not about, it's not about me, right? It's about what I, the message that I have for others, and and just looking back, kind of, you know, re thinking about my path and so on. In itself, it's reaffirming. Like when you look at how far you have become, so it, it I had that effect. It, it that just in the preparation of this had that positive effect on me, and so That's I, awesome to hear. I really. Yeah, I, I hope that we um, were able to give you some insights that could be helpful for you. And like Craig mentioned, um, I mean, for the audience, um, if you have any questions, please stay connected. Reach out to us, reach out to me, reach out to him. Um, you know, with any questions, we love staying connected. And uh, I'm happy to answer questions that you have to help you um, 
like I said, you know, building community is very a community of village is very important. We support each other. Um, I have resources as well to share with people, like articles that you can that you can share. We're gonna put that in the description of the YouTube uh, page, right, Craig? Uh, sorry, I was looking at the comments, so I didn't hear the question. What was no. that? <laughs> no, uh, we have a list of resources to share with people. We can. Oh yeah, yeah. I was. Here, but... Yeah. yeah. We will put it in the description. So for those especially that come along and find this video after the fact, uh, link in the description to some useful resources that Dr. PCK has put down. <laughs> I'm going to try to get that to catch on with your students. Uh, yeah. No, good. PCK. Piece of cake. <laughs> yeah. And I, yeah, piece of cake. Yeah. Your journey is a piece of cake. Yeah. I should have, have you on every Friday for sure. Um, if only we had more time, right? Um, and. It's better than anything on TV and we're live and all that good stuff. Hey, so if anybody out there is interested in joining me for some coffee and are in the talent development or higher education uh, sectors, would love to have you on the show to talk about what you're doing. I have some shows lined up. Uh, one's going to be on open educational resources. Uh, another one's going to be on whether a certification is worthwhile in talent development. They come at different times, so be sure to subscribe to the channel so that you get notifications of when these are coming up. I also do videos on how to be a better public speaker and, you know, vocab words in talent development. So, uh, yeah, uh, with that said, I don't know really how to wrap these things up because this is my first one. Uh, so what we're going to do is just go out with that video that I showed earlier of you um, <laughs> on a unicorn, which if you're just catching this now, is because higher ed jobs are hard to come by. It's a unicorn, but somehow Dr. PCK latched on. Everybody have a great day. <laughs>